The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... The neighing of horses whenever you say Hrablucha! And then we'll insert the actual neighing of horses. <laughs> uh, starting off... <laughs> I'm sorry, I already derailed it. Uh, so this week... We're doing Young Frankenstein. Yes, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is going to be a rowdy episode. <laughs> yeah, yes it is. The thing, we, you know, we talked about this a little bit when we did uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, but it's tricky talking about a comedy because you just end up wanting to like quote all your favorite jokes. Uh, so much. <laughs> we'll try to avoid that a little bit, but we're definitely going to have to quote some jokes in here. That's just, oh. <laughs> it's going to be impossible to resist. I'm ready for it. (laughs) All right, so let's go ahead and start this. We open up on the 20th Century Fox logo. Rest in peace, 20th Century Fox now, (laughs) owned by Disney. And we also get a castle on a hill with uh, the title and uh, all the cast credits going over it at this point. And we've got a loaded, we've got a stacked cast. Oh, yeah. And it's, you know, it's very, this feels, I mean, like right out of the gate, it's it's so clearly like paying tribute to Universal, you know, like the, Mm -hmm. the castle is a matte painting. The credit font even looks, you know, kind of gothic. It, it looks very like the stuff Universal was doing. And the soundtrack sounds like, uh, you know, the kind of music they had in those movies. Like the attention to detail in this is what makes this movie work so well. It's just everything is just so perfect. Right. And you could actually tell that like everyone involved loved the old Frankenstein movies. Mm-hmm. And like just because there's that extra mwah, detail to every little thing. Yeah, and in fact, in the credits, one thing you'll see is that they thank uh, Kenneth Strickfadden, who, uh, if you listened to the episodes a couple weeks ago, um, he is the guy who like designed and like held on to all of the science equipment from the Universal movies. I think Don Glute mentioned that he had tried to get some of the equipment from him and wasn't able to for Tales of Frankenstein. But in this movie, they were able to... Uh, and so they have all the original gear from the original movies and some new pieces that he built specifically for this movie, namely the sparking science wheel. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, ah. so you get a little nod to the to the uh, Hammer movies in addition to the Universal stuff. So, yeah, it's right. so good. So, yeah, once we get all of the credits and everything introduced, we get some bells chiming. Then we see the face of a clock. We pan slowly to a coffin. And we, we go all the way around the coffin a couple times. <laughs> and then on top we see the coffin of Baron von Frankenstein. And then it pops open. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. We get, we get the... It's a pretty pretty nice, uh, I guess, skeleton to a degree. It's definitely a corpse. Yeah, um, it's it's like kind of Crypt Keeper level where it's like mostly skeletonized, but you get a little bit of like decayed flesh on it. So yeah. it's... Yeah, it's not fully a skeleton, and that corpse is clutching a box very tightly. But, but to take a step back, how, how did they just leave the, the, the Baron in that room? Just in for, his house, rotting. Right, for some 50 years at least, bare minimum, maybe even longer. <laughs> Yeah, and there's, it's kind of confusing here because so the skeleton's clutching this box, and then you have mm-hmm. somebody off screen reaching into frame, trying, trying to take to the box out. away, and they kind of have like a tug of war. <laughs> right. Uh, and then we ultimately find out, um, and it's a couple scenes away, but like this box contained the last will and testament of Baron Frankenstein. So I'm not but not not Victor Frankenstein. They specifically mention it's Beaufort <laughs> Frankenstein. So the great grandfather yeah. <laughs> somehow wrote this will. 
for his great grandson, knowing full well that his son was going to make a monster. Yeah, it's what? very confusing. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> It almost it almost feels like that's even intentional. Like thing, right. things things kind of get wonky with the timelines in the Universal movies, and this feels maybe like an on purpose thing where they're kind of playing around with like what, like this being kind of confusing a little bit. Yeah, I feel like it is a gag. <laughs> but then immediately from there, we go to a uh, university medical lab. Or actually, it's a school, uh, classroom, effectively. Yeah, it's like a lecture hall, but with like a yeah. you know one of the kind where they like do demonstrations down at, on the floor and everything. But we we will see a man kind of come into the back holding the box we just saw, and he just kind of sits in the back listening to the lecture. Yeah, and of course, this Frankenstein is an actual medical doctor, so he's actually gotten his degree and everything. He he has his doctorate. And he's actually teaching science. So <laughs> one of the first actual instances of actual science we've seen. Yeah. Mainly going over, you know, the parietal lobe, basically part structures of the brain and spinal column. Yeah. And he like does a whole demonstration where like the, he brings a guy out and they like talk about the difference between. Um, voluntary and involuntary. Yeah. So he like does, you know tells the guy to move and then like causes him to involuntarily move by like, you know, scaring oh. him. Well, not only that, but he, he kind of knees him in the groin to a degree as well. <laughs> yeah. And he has, like, some of the greatest, like, nonsense, uh, like, slur. Like, he, he's like, you mother-grabbing. <laughs> like, it's right. all this weird kind of silly insults that he's using and stuff. <laughs> right. And then he's like, okay, so let me let me, let me me show you this. That, that was, we had the voluntary, involuntary. However... We're going to do this special demonstration. I don't think this is actually real. I would. I need to look this up a little bit deeper. But he's like, if we put a clamp, a metal clamp on the base of the neck, it's, it looked like, what, a torque? Kind of a, a necklace type thing they, they slapped on him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they put it on the back of his neck, and he's like, now we're going to leave that there for about five or six seconds, and now he's not going to have any reaction when I do this, and he needs him in the groin again. <laughs> And the guy doesn't do anything. He just sits there. His eyes kind of cross a bit. And then the doc's like, all right, we're going to take this off. And immediately the guy just drops because he got knee in the groin. Yeah. And, and he's like, like, yeah, he's holding himself. And then the doc's like, hey, give him an extra buck <laughs> for, for his trouble. Yeah. And the assistants roll him out. Um, and he, like... Throughout this, also, we have, like, one sort of, like, annoying student who keeps, like, interjecting with questions, uh, and he, this is where we get sort of, like, the famous bit where he, like, insists that his name is pronounced Frankenstein, Frankenstein. instead of Frankenstein. Yeah. By the way, this this guy, uh, I d need to double check what his name is, or even if he, he has a name, but he reminds me of the Hammer Frankenstein. He's he's a little smug little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's necessarily a nod, but it definitely feels like it is. Yeah, it could be. Like, com yeah, a combative student arguing with the teacher was definitely like that that kid. Um, exactly. And But, like, he's really insist Like, he wants to know more about, you know, the famous Frankenstein and, you know, uh, Dr. Frankenstein is not having it. And he's like, I, I don't have, you know, I'm doing real science here. We're really studying the brain. Uh, I'm not interested in the ravings of a famous kook, even if he has, you know, my same last name. Uh, right. I, I do love the fact that the, the guy even goes in and is like, well, you know, there's all this work with hearts and kidneys. And then this, this Frankenstein, um, Frederick gets, or Frankenstein, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Gets a little agitated. He's like, hearts and kidneys are tinker toys, showing a little bit of the madness that's kind of underneath. Mm -hmm. And he just shoves his own scalpel into his leg. <laughs> he and like he hammers onto his knee. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> so good. He's like, my grandfather's work was doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm not gonna. I'm not. A, I'm not a doctor myself, but I feel like jabbing a scalpel into your leg like that would probably either end your day. <laughs> or maybe end you permanently. I, you know, I, I feel there's enough blood vessels there that'll that that's a danger. Yeah, it would have been a problem. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like as you said, like as far as the madness goes, like Gene Wilder is one of the best Doctor Frankenstein's. Actually, like he has yeah. such a way about him where he can be very like subdued and calm and kind. I mean, it's you know, if you've not seen this, like I don't, I can't imagine you would not have, but like. You know, if you've seen 
Willy Wonka. Like, it's the right? same thing where he can be, like, your best friend, and then, like, at a drop of a hat, he's just, like, dialed up to 11, just, like, crazy. Uh, and it, yeah. Yeah, we, we have no way of knowing where the river's flowing. Uh, I forget the whole saying, but yeah. <laughs> then he starts screaming about the hounds of hell. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, we've gotten very serious very quickly, Gene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, he's he's just the perfect and the thing about this like uh, you know i don't think we really mentioned this at the beginning so like this is directed by mel brooks obviously and it's co-written by mel brooks and gene wilder but the actuality is gene wilder basically wrote the he wrote like the first draft of this completely himself Mm -hmm. and then mel brooks went in and like punched it up with more jokes Mm -hmm. and for my money i think this is the best mel brooks movie uh, and, you know, obviously I'm biased because it's Frankenstein. But, like, right, right. I think that the thing is some Mel Brooks movies can just, like, fall into just being joke after joke without much plot. But I think mm-hmm. because Gene Wilder set up the plot first and then they layered the jokes on top, there's more of, like, a something to sink your teeth into than just a bunch of jokes. Well, yeah, and also, like, most Mel Brooks movies, they're kind of crass. <laughs> and there's a little bit of crassness in here, but it's it's definitely not your standard like mel brooks like as yeah no everyone would probably say uh what blazing saddles is one that probably everyone would mention i mean there's even a song about it oh space balls mhm yeah and space balls uh but yeah so i mean this this one is dialed down for mel brooks yeah like the, it's kind of a shame that they didn't like do something like this again because it like mm-hmm. oh, this yeah. partnership is just perfect right yeah, I think probably Gene was. I, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but it feels like Gene was like, "Let's let's let's chill and just you know, <laughs> we'll keep it classy." You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so after he stabs himself, he dismisses the class, right? Because <laughs> uh, that's yeah. What are you gonna do after that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we get the guy from the back carrying the box. Uh, he he comes down, and you know this is where he reveals that it's the great grandfather's will. And the guy himself is uh, Gerhard Falkstein. <laughs> yeah. Basically the lawyer, yeah. Yeah. And um, so then it cuts straight from there to Frankenstein at the train platform with um, <laughs> Elizabeth, his fiance, And, you know, they're kind of saying their goodbyes. Like she's, she's, you know, he's going back to the old country to kind of like figure out what's going on there, settle, you know, all the estate stuff. And mm-hmm. she's going to, you know, stay where, where she is. Right. For now. And she's kind of a Hollywood socialite. Yeah. And they do a lot of really good bits here where, like, she's getting ready to go to a party and she keeps, like, not wanting him to kiss her or touch her hair. Touch or, her. <laughs> or touch or, anything. Yeah, like, he even tries to hug her. She's like, you'll wrinkle my dress. It's chiffon. Like, um, Oh, no, no. It's ta- as, as he's grabbing her, she just, this is one of the bits. I'm sorry. I have to go into it. But she's like, taffeta, darling. And he's like, taffeta, my love. <laughs> just in response, as if it was their own little secret code word. And she's like, no, don't touch. Don't touch the dress. It wrinkles. <laughs> yeah uh so like right. they kind of have a weird rela- like their relationship doesn't seem entirely uh close um yeah. or or entirely both uh equal sided yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> and then we kind of have a great bit where he gets on the train he's in america he gets on a train and you're there's like some people behind him who are chatting and then it just oh, like yeah. the old woman's like he was at it again and then uh the husband goes well let him let him <laughs> And then you just see like a wipe, like where it's like time has passed, and now it looks like the exact same train, the same couple, but now they're couple. speaking in German. German. <laughs> so somehow he's taken the train from America to Transylvania, mm-hmm. <laughs> or there's been a which, boat in between, and who knows? <laughs> which you know, Transylvania is in Romania, not not Germany, but you know what? It doesn't matter. This is a comedy. <laughs> yeah. All right, but yes. Yeah, so the doctor ends up on this train platform in the middle of the night, mist everywhere, just classic creepy. Mm-hmm. creepy uh, scene and then we get the sliding of something or something scraping against the pavement <laughs> turns out it's a boot and it also turns out it's marty feldman as igor <laughs> or you know he's supposed to be igor <laughs> yeah it's this great bit where like he meets he's like dr frankenstein and he's like no it's pronounced frankenstein and he's like no, no i'm frederick pretty, i'm pretty sure it's frankenstein <laughs> Right. They get enough, and so then, like you know, Igor then like insists that his name's pronounced Igor, Igor, um, right. which is that he calls he calls the doctor Froderick, <laughs> yeah, in response to, <laughs> and of course the Igor thing is especially good, you know, because it's Marty Feldman and he's got like the bug eyes, um, right. and like again, you know, like 
he i feel like marty feldman is actually like when most people think about like the igor character or like the the hunchback sidekick character in general they're picturing him like they're not necessarily picturing uh lugosi uh in the universal movie like he, the way that he played like just the his face is just made to play this part you know right. um and the weirdest thing is I, I read something that like you know gene wilder was like had this this idea that he was working on it kind of it was in like pre-production and his management company was like if you've got something that you're working on if you could find something that uh marty feldman and peter boyle could be useful in uh because i just signed both of them and it'd be great if we could just like use you all three of you in something and like my god like if they like that's just the perfect lineup for this movie (laughs) right (laughs) jeez it's like they were everyone was made for this one movie (laughs) yeah it really feels that way oh is that a conspiracy (laughs) Mm. Mm. all right so after that uh, of course their grandfathers used to work together (laughs) (laughs) the the igor or igor family line has always worked for the frankenstein or (laughs) frankenstein you know whatever yeah so they're gonna go back to the castle Mm -hmm. Igor, like, or Igor offers to carry the luggage, but then, like, picks up one thing and it's too heavy, so he picks up the small one, and they head to, uh, like, a little wagon. They're going to go to the station. Well, of course, we have the great bit of walk this way. (laughs) (laughs) Right? As as Igor is uh, walking on a cane, like, really putting all of his weight onto it and just kind of shuffling along, he goes down some steps and literally hands the cane up to... (laughs) dr frankenstein so he will do the same and he kind of does to his own credit but then halfway down he's like what the hell am i doing (laughs) it's this weird little short half cane so he has to like lean over sideways it's yeah it's great it's impractical but yeah once they get to this um the hay basically the hay wagon uh the doc's like all right well i'm gonna just you know toss my toss my bag in here and as soon as he does he hears this weird oof (laughs) turns out there was a lab assistant in the back of the wagon, uh, the beautiful Terry Gar as Inga. <laughs> and she offers a roll in the hay. In the hay. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a heck of a way to say hello, isn't it? Yeah. A roll, roll, roll in the hay. <laughs> as she just literally just rolls back and forth in the hay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then we get, like, them traveling and... You know, it's a short little scene of them in the wagon. You get a nice little bit where they hear, like, a wolf howl in the distance. I love this. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's going to keep going. But, yeah, the, the werewolf or the wolf is apparently played by Mel Brooks. He plays a lot of the sounds. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but, yeah. So, of course, Inga then goes, werewolf. And the doctor's like, werewolf. <laughs> and then, of course, Igor is like, their wolf. Their castle. <laughs> because <laughs> he thought they were doing a bit you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and so yeah they have arrived at the castle and the castle door is huge because you know it's a castle and it has right. like these with big massive knockers <laughs> bit, these huge metal rings that he knocks the door with and he's <laughs> like this is right as uh frederick is lifting uh inga yeah. out of the wagon and you know he's like what knockers and knockers. she's like thank you doctor <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, oh. it's so good. Oh, uh, and the, after after they knock on the door, it swings open and reveals Frau Blucha! <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with, of course, the horse neighing and thunder, if, if Anthony hasn't already added that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, that becomes like this great running gag. Like, any time that her name is mentioned, there's just, like, horses. Like, the first time you actually see them rear up and everything, but, like, right. uh, every time her name's mentioned, you'll just hear them off in the distance. Like, they're just no terrified matter, of no her. No matter how far away they are, <laughs> the horses will neigh. Yeah. And, like, in fact, as they, like, go inside, Igor just peeks his head back out and says her name one more time right. just so that they do it again. And he just, like, looks right at the camera and smiles. <laughs> yeah, Marty Feldman mugs so much, and it's so great. Yeah, he breaks the fourth wall all over the place, and every time mm-hmm. it's wonderful. <laughs> mm-hmm. But so, yeah, inside, um, she is now giving them a tour of the castle, a kind of a brief tour. She doesn't really show him much and ends up taking Frederick to his room. By the way, she's doing this very slowly. 
Like yeah. every step is almost painfully slow. Yeah, and it's Cloris Leachman, and she's yeah, she's so just like ominous and weird in this. <laughs> so they get up to Frederick's room, and he keeps asking about like, is there another secret lab? This is just like generic library books in the, in the room, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. There's a real Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein library around here somewhere. Right? <laughs> But instead, she just starts in like trying to offer him all sorts of different drinks, and he's like, "No, I'm fine, thank you. I'm going to bed." And she just like adds a warm milk, yeah. perhaps a glass of water. Do you want some brandy? And he's like, yeah. he's increasingly getting like you, you can hear that he's just about to snap at her. But I, I think he almost <laughs> takes her up on the Ovaltine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot Ovaltine was in there. <laughs> right. Of course, Ovaltine's in this. <laughs> and as she leaves, she like kind of like whispers to this painting of his father or of his grandfather who just looks exactly like gene wilder and she kisses the painting and right. then walks out so so if it hasn't already told you everything you need to know i think i think we're there but <laughs> yeah there, there will be a reveal later i'm not sure how valuable it is but <laughs> it's gonna happen so then we get Frederick asleep, and he's, like, yelling. He's having a bad dream. Yeah, he's having nightmares and just, like, talking in his sleep, and it's, like, yeah, it's... <laughs> it sounds like he's getting beat up by his gr- his grandfather. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to give in. I don't believe in fate. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. He's like, then fine, I'll say it. Destiny, destiny, no escaping that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did his grandfather make him do in yeah. that dream <laughs> but so he like sits up awake and inga is standing there beside the bed and she has heard music through the walls yeah, and then you know music. he hears it as well so they start trying to figure out where it's coming from and you know frederick quickly is like i bet it's a secret passage yeah because i'm right? <laughs> i'm in a black and white monster movie there's definitely gonna be a secret <laughs> passage somewhere <laughs> And, you know, sure oh. enough, they they figure it out by uh, they lift up a candle, sti- a candle out of a candlestick on the wall and a bookcase like spins around Swing. very like, you know, the Abbott and Costello movie. Like irresponsibly fast. <laughs> it's like super <laughs> it's... fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> and at first it's like Frederick gets taken behind the wall and he's like, put the candle back. Put the candle back. <laughs> And so they, 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 you know, the bit kind of goes on. He ends up getting smashed in, in the in between right. the, tries, the bookshelf. Yes, trying to stop the swing with his own body, which <laughs> that that's that was not well thought out. But okay, good try. And then he's like, you know, face all smashed up. Like, do mm. not put the candle back. Candle back. <laughs> so ultimately, they do find a way. They get the the bookcase like turned sideways, where they can kind of come and go. And you know, there is like a secret lab, and they kind of wander down there. And, you know, it's all, like, covered in cobwebs. And you get this great bit where, like, there's this progressive uh, display of, yeah. like, decaying skulls. Dead skull, yeah, it's like... Two-year-old dead skull. <laughs> six-month dead skull. Freshly dead. Oh, I go, I ain't got nobody. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> One of the best scenes ever. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's, of course, we have the exchange of, I go, Frederick, and he's like, "How are you here already?" And he's like, "Well, you know, call it a hunch." <laughs> hunch, but <Ba-dum-tsh. laughs> Damn you, Marty Feldman! Yeah, for slowing down our podcast. <laughs> uh, so they find another door in this lab, and they go to the next lab, which is like the the sort of resurrection room that we see in in all these movies, where we get all of the universal science gear. Um, you know, all that, that strict fan stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, and there's a violin on the table. <laughs> it's, it's very warm to the touch. So someone was just here. Yeah. So, and this is where Frederick sees that this is his grandfather's private library. And he starts like pulling books off the shelf, including one that's just called How, How I, I Did, I did it, it by Victor Frankenstein. Ah, <laughs> oh, so good. And, like, right as he sees that, it cuts to just outside, and there's, like, lightning striking. And I'm pretty sure that it's the same clip of lightning striking from Bride of Frankenstein. I believe you are uh, The ones that, again, that Don Glute was talking about a couple weeks ago that he purchased for Tales of Frankenstein mm-hmm. as well. And I think we'll see that same exact shot three or four times in this movie. Yes. Yeah, it turns out the uh, journal basically details exactly how to create your own monster uh but the the main thing is you have to take the negative put it to the positive put the positive to the negative you have to reverse the polarity on the monster 
Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> ah, it's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere you look, you have to you reverse the polarity. That's it. But yeah, so at this point, we also see the Doctor is becoming more and more unhinged as uh, more erratic as things are progressing. And oh, like, yeah. This could work! And then it cuts back to the, the picture on the wall, smiling <laughs> as the lightning goes off. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, ah, so the ghost of Frankenstein is here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so then we cut to them like eating dinner, Frederick and Inga and Igor, and uh, they're kind of discussing like what this is, you know, clearly Frederick's on board now. Like he, yeah. he's, he's in, yeah, they're going to do this. And, you know, he's like reading that, like the creature has to be larger to, right. uh, uh, this is again, comes from like, you know, from the Mary Shelley, like it's, you know, the creature has to be larger so that you can like work with the little, you know, details and stuff and, and be able to like, yeah, you got to scale it up. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a little easier. And then we get one of the. The most Mel Brooksian bits mm-hmm. from the movie yeah. that kind of carries for a while, which is when they they're talking about that everything has to be bigger. Well, everything has to be bigger. Yeah. So Inga's like, he must have an enormous Schwanstucker, <laughs> <laughs> and we know what that means. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Woof. Uh, yeah. It's very popular with the ladies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Igor. Says that. <laughs> they have like a drawing that um, Igor does of what mm-hmm. the creature would look like, and he kind of hangs it up, and it's right. like. It's the creature. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's swaying back and forth, and then it kind of, like, fades to a man hanging on the gallows, swaying in the exact same way, which is just a great shot. Which, it, it's, uh, yeah, that that is actually pretty cool. And the fact that he's wearing the suit from the from the drawing, it's like, <laughs> I, I'm i going to call him Igor. You can call him Igor. I, I know him as Igor. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> anyway, he, he's wearing the exact same suit as the drawing. So I feel like... Igor knew what was up. He knew this guy was being hung. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, this guy's seven foot tall. We're going to use that body. That's <laughs> yeah. our body. Yeah. So, of course, you know, then we get stuff that we've seen before. And, you know, they, they take the, the man from the gallows. Then they go to a grave and dig up a grave. Uh, so, you know, we're doing the, the normal rounds of collecting from all the all the good places to get dead bodies. <laughs> but while they're at the bottom of this grave, Frederick's like, you know, this is awful, dirty work. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Igor could say it, it could be worse. He's like, how? <laughs> it could be raining. <laughs> and of course, immediately starts raining. Yeah, downpour instantly, and they just like look at each other like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so they get the body onto their wagon and kind of cover it up with tarps and are like heading through town. They kind of run into a uh, police officer, of course, as like the body, one of the bodies has shifted and like a hand is just like sticking out of the side of the cart. Yeah, they, they, they had a little spill on the cobblestone and busted up in the co- coffin. And of course, as you said, the hand spills out and uh, to cover it up. The doctor uh, kind of just props himself and uh, uses the hand as a natural prop, <laughs> like it was his own hand. Yeah, he like hides his arm behind his back, and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's this. Yeah, it's like a great gag, and like he can't. So when it has to be moved, like he like stomps and you know lets Igor. Know. <laughs> yeah, he's like underneath the cart and like grabs the hand and kind of moves it around, like puppets it. It's some great physical comedy. Yeah. It really is. And then Frederick sends Igor to yeah, the brain we depository. Brain. <laughs> right. We need a brain. We've got to get the brain. That's always important, right? Yeah. So and he like course- writes a name down on his hand. Like, this is the brain we need. And so, you know, he goes to the brain depository, which has a sign on the door that's like, after hours, drop brain through slot. <laughs> slot. <laughs> like it's a video rental store or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we get, like, one of the most famous bits from the movie where, you know, he picks up the correct brain, gets scared, drops it, it gets yep. squished. Um, uh, so he picks up the next brain, which says, like, abnormal, ab- do not use. Which, yeah, abnormal. Yeah. normal. <laughs> which, what are you, what are other right. people using these brains for? What? what? <laughs> it, you know, maybe they're just used to this. They're like, somebody's going to build a monster, you know, it happens at least once a year. It's medical students, you know, so... This one brain, don't touch it. You can use anybody else's. But we, you know, to go back to uh, Hans Delbruck is the brain. I love that it says scientist and saint, specifically <laughs> letting you know he is a smart person and a good person. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all you need for these monsters and just right. never get it. So, <laughs> nope. 
And so it cuts pretty much, he gets the abnormal brain, and then we're, like, in the revival process. Mm -hmm. Um, Igor's up on the roof with kites, and, you know, there's lightning and the storm and all that. And Frederick looks at Inga and says, elevate me. She's like, here now? (laughs) Are you sure? (laughs) Yeah, and of course, you know, so it's like the slab that the creature's on. And instead of it just the creature going up, the doctor, like, stands on it with him and, like, raises up to the ceiling and goes on his, like mad scientist rant while he's being like raised up it's and this scene like it's just played straight like it's just really good you know like you got the storm you got the lightning you got gene wilder like you know ranting and raving um and like faithful dame that slime crawled out of the ocean i think he says and yeah yeah it's it's really good yeah it's fantastic and so you know he gets to the top they start throwing switches or he has uh, Igor throws switches, and it's like, you know, the first two don't work, so he's like, throw switch number three. Not the third switch! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything but that! Yeah. Uh, but he does throw it, and then, you know, things really kind of, like, amp up. You get lots of sparks and, and the science gear going. This is where you see that, that sparking, spinning science wheel. Mm-hmm. But nothing happens. Uh, the creature does not seem to respond. Uh, they, you know, they lower back down and, and as, as the doctor says, life teaches us to accept failures and successes with quiet dignity and grace. (laughs) And then as, as they walk away, he goes, son of a bitch bastard. What did you do to me? (laughs) I don't want to live. (laughs) And he starts pounding the chest of the creature. Uh, (laughs) Uh, yeah. So obviously, uh, the quiet dignity and grace didn't uh, quite stick there, but you know, Maybe maybe something will come of it later. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so that we cut from that to a town meeting, uh, very much like the town meetings we've seen many times before. Everybody's mad that a Frankenstein has moved back to town. Frankenstein's They're very trouble. skeptical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we meet Inspector Kemp, who is a, just a direct parody of Inspector Krogh mm-hmm. from Son of Frankenstein. Yeah. Which, is, uh, again, like, this is the kind of, like, it's a little bit more of a deep cut. You know, this isn't from, like, Frankenstein or Bride of no, Frankenstein. This is... Like, this just shows that, like, these are people who are into these movies and really care and want to do them justice. Right. You know, bringing this character in. And he's so, so much fun in this. Oh, yeah. He's a sneaky little guy, but uh, he's also hilarious. So, yeah, if you don't remember Inspector Krogh from Son of Frankenstein, he was the one who had the prosthetic arm Mm -hmm. that he had to, like, manually move around. Um, So, like, you know, it's just right for parody. And, like, you know. Kemp's actually just slapping his prosthetic arm all the way around, letting it swing. Yeah, it's just all over the place. And he also, to to make matters worse, he has an eye patch and a monocle, but they're on the same eye. (laughs) He agrees to go pay Frederick a visit and see what's going on in the castle. Yeah. He doesn't want people to get too out of hand and get too rowdy, but, you know, he'll he'll figure out what's going on and make sure everything's okay. Right, just to make sure that he's not following in his father's footsteps. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> following in his grandfather's footsteps. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that that bit is just like there's, <laughs> it's so funny and there is no reason like it doesn't make any sense. His just his accent's so thick that even the people in the town don't understand him occasionally, right. and it's always like when he's talking to a whole crowd and the whole crowd what? in unison is like what. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great. Yep. And so then we see the crew, the trio, eating dinner. They're all still kind of upset about the failure. Frederick is not eating his dinner. Or she, she says, you haven't touched your food. And then he just like mashes it, it up saying. with his hands. So you touched it now. <laughs> He's very petulant. But then they are eating dessert. And they're talking about what, what the dessert is. And then you just hear a mmm from right. off screen. <laughs> and of course, the doctor is like, Oh yeah, I am, you know, I don't really like desserts myself, but I thought it was pretty good too. And then everyone's like, "What? <laughs> what?" He's like, "What?" He's like, "You made a yummy right. sound." <laughs> we all know what that means. You know, mm, that's yeah. yummy. Okay. But no, it turns uh, out it wasn't so when, I, they realize no one has made a yummy sound. <gasps> Must be they the realize monster. what's going on. Yep, so they uh they run back to the lab. And then we get, you know, he gets to say that it's a live line because, you know, it just wouldn't be the same if he didn't. Oh, yeah. He says it's alive, and then, like, he starts to you free. unclamp the metal bands and commands the creature to stand up and to walk. Yeah. Then, to celebrate, <laughs> Igor decides to light a cigarette, yeah. and the little match causes the creature sure. to freak out. So that's our sort of, like, fire gag, but, you know, instead of it being a giant torch, it's just, like, a, a single match. 
And of course, he starts choking the doctor and the doctor starts playing charades. And he's like, first syllable, sounds like head. And yeah, th so basically, it turns out it's sedative. I mean, sedative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh after you know they do give the creatures sedatives frederick asks igor like you did get the right brain right and he's like oh well you know actually i wasn't able to get that yeah, one belonged to someone but i got abby, i got the next best thing to someone named abby abby something abby normal <laughs> abby normal <laughs> of course <laughs> And so then Frederick starts choking out Igor. Game by monster, and they do the, the brain. <laughs> and they do the charades yeah. bit again. <laughs> but of course, they're interrupted uh, by Inspector Kemp. Yeah, so uh, they run out, and of course, they've got to hide the monster. So they, they go out, and we then get the dart scene again, directly pulled from Son of Frankenstein, yep. where Frederick and Kemp are uh, are just playing darts. But in this case, Kemp just cheats just cheat. relentlessly at darts. <laughs> yeah, of course, the doctor actually just throws his, his set. And then as soon as uh, the inspector, like as soon as he's done, the inspector runs up, grabs them like walks a couple steps towards the doctor runs back real quick jabs them all in one little spot and runs back to where he was takes his arm and goes as he slaps himself in the chest with the prosthetic arm yeah and then frederick goes to throw his set or you know his second round and Kemp keeps like you know making noises like right as he throws and causing him to to make bad throws. One hits the wall. Two or three go out the window. One hits a cat once again, played by Mel Brooks. <laughs> he, and all like they just can't like they have to just put so many subtle like there's one of them he throws backwards right. for no reason like he's just holding it backwards if you're watching. Uh, and then one of them, he like throws behind him and it goes in the fire behind, you know, in the fireplace behind him. Mm -hmm. That's going on. Meanwhile, then we get Frau Blucher um, <laughs> and she is trying to, you know, she's trying to set the creature free. So she starts playing the violin to calm the creature down. Yeah, that'll make him as gentle as a lamb. Yeah. So she thinks. <laughs> and. And so then we get, like, everybody's there. They see all this going on, and we get this whole bit where it's like, oh, so that was you. Yes, you were the violin. Yes. yes. You know, that was your like, cigar. <laughs> yes. Turns out, Frau Blucher was Victor's grandfather's girlfriend. <laughs> that was the big reveal, which... Yeah, we, he was my... Boy she, she yells, he was my boyfriend. boyfriend. Uh, well, yeah. So it's, it seems like if you're the assistant, you just automatically marry the the doctor, or at least you become intimate with the uh, doctor. Yeah, right. So as they're like arguing, somebody bumps into some of the equipment. Some sparks fly, it scares the creature. He gets out in the process. So now the creature's escaped, and we get something similar to the Maria scene. They kind of have their own sort of like play on it, where she is standing over like a well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's got one one big flower and she's pulling petals off one at a time. Right. Um, Throwing them in there. And then the monster comes in. And it's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. She, so she runs out of petals and she's like, oh, no, I don't have any more petals. What should we throw in now? Right. And, and, and <laughs> Peter, Peter Boyle, the monster, um, looks around and then looks kind of directly at the camera. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. you know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. But instead, it cuts back to them, and there's a seesaw, and she's, like, sitting on one side, and she's telling him to jump on the other side. And again, he looks at the camera like, mm. right. and By the way, it's, <laughs> but cutting, he does it's it. cutting to her parents in between each of these. Like, <laughs> where's, our, where's, uh, where's our little girl at? Everybody's, you know, in the town's worried that something's going on, so, like... You know, they're like, where is she? You know, we got to make sure she's safe. Did you put her to bed? And you're like, no, I haven't seen her. And they run outside. They've looked upstairs and she's not right. there. But then, meanwhile, the creature sits down on the seesaw and it launches her through the right. air. At that point, they're like, uh, oh, did we check her bedroom? We checked upstairs, but did we check her bedroom? No, no, let's go to the bedroom. And she perfectly, Wait. like, it's it's timed perfectly. She flies through the window, lands in bed right as the parents walk in. They're like, oh, okay, everything's fine. She's cool. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I feel like if um, Boris Karloff saw that, he would be like, well done. I, I bet, much prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> then we cut to a, um, a blind man. Mm. Um, he looks who very familiar. Just... Huh? Mm. Wait a second. Is that Gene Hackman? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> right? but he's so good in it uh and like, like apparently cameo. like i yeah yeah he actually was like yes i want to be in this movie 
and I want to be that the blind man. Yeah, and so he's the blind man from Bride of Frankenstein, basically. Uh, he's praying for a friend, and the monster just bursts through the door, like, growling and, like, still very monstrous. Right. But he, the guy's just like, <laughs> oh, cool, a, a friend. <laughs> <laughs> like he's they're playing up the obliviousness of the blind guy for laughs obviously but they do kind of become friends and like they sit down to dinner and you get this great gag where like the blind man is trying to like serve up some hot soup yep. and no matter where the creature tries to hold the bowl right he lap. still man <laughs> ladles like three ladles full of hot soup right into the creature's lap all right well, well the soup's <laughs> not working it's obviously burning the monster's crotch but you know what we'll soothe that some nice wine <laughs> <laughs> so the old man pours them both a, a mug of wine and is like, all right, before we drink it, let's have a toast. And they go to toast and the old man just hammers the monster's mug and cracks it in his hand. Yeah. And, wine goes everywhere. Yeah. And so, yeah, we get another great Peter Boyle but, scene where he just looks directly at the camera like for real, like really. <laughs> yeah. And so then they do like the fire good with a cigar bit and again manages to mess things up and like the blind man lights the creature's thumb on fire (laughs) misses the cigar completely just lights his thumb on fire but i mean i guess it's it's expected you know he didn't see where (laughs) and so you know in in the previous movie you know something happened like townspeople always run the creature off from the blind man um and you know he loses his friend but in this case he's done like he's just like i'm out of here i can't handle this anymore as soon as he sees his thumb on fire he just goes (laughs) and just bolts out the door yeah Yeah, so the creature is, like, stalking through the village, and this scene looks very universal. Like, this is, this town area looks, you know, very much like we've seen in, like, Ghost and Son of Frankenstein. Yeah, no doubt. It even has a little bit of expressionist angles to it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Slightly skewed. And probably this may be some of those same, you know, backlot sets. I'm not sure about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. But, of course, the monster Um, hears the lovely playing of a violin. And that draws them in. Yep. Time. And the, yeah, the, the, you know, the music soothing the savage beast thing, you know, happens over and over again in this one. Uh, and so he like sees this, you know, sort of like busker on the, you know, side of the street, like playing the violin. Uh, and then as we get closer, we see that it is Frederick in disguise. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. And he's like, <laughs> get him. So they drop a net on him and then they all tackle him. <laughs> and of course, this time and, they uh, actually give him the set of, set of give, uh, set of tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then we're back at the uh the castle and frederick says love is the only thing that is going to save this creature yeah. which you know is like a great sentiment like that's that's really what we've we needed this whole time is like we need someone to care for the creature rather than like you know punish him and you know maybe all this will, will fix it but this is literally <laughs> the first frankenstein that's been like no i love my monster he's the best <laughs> and, but then we <laughs> We get like a, such a good gag. Whatever you know, I do, you know whatever the, I say, whatever I do, do not let me out of this room until I have soothed the monster. No matter how much I yell and scream. By the way, he's setting everything up perfectly. Yeah, yeah like, and you know, you've, you see scenes like this in other movies and like, you know, they intentionally, or they really don't want you to let them, but like the literally the second that they close the door, he sees the monster right. and is banging on the door like, let me, let out. me out this instant. <laughs> But then when he realizes that they're not going to let him out, he he finally does. Yeah, he finally does try to help. And, you know, he's like, people only hate you because they're jealous. You're not evil. You're good. And like the creature is genuinely touched and he kind of starts to cry. Um, They have a nice little cry in each other's arms. It's very Yeah. And it's kind of, yeah, it's a sweet moment. Uh, but then like, you still get that, you know, Victor is kind of the mad scientist still where he's like, we'll make the single greatest contribution to science since the discovery of science or of fire. And he's like, you know, kind of ratcheting up and he yells, my name is Frankenstein. And like, (laughs) so he's finally like fully embraced his heritage and everything. So it turns out they're going to do a a little bit of a demonstration for a live studio audience. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of like, uh, some of the, the hammer movies where they kept talking about like, we're going to, 
you know, we're going to do these demonstrations and take you on the road. And right. in those movies, sometimes the creature at that time was hesitant to be, you know, like a specimen right. on display. Because they're actual people for but, the most part, as opposed to creatures. Yeah. But this time, you know, it actually kind of works. Yeah. Like the at first, the people are, you know, the crowd is reluctant. They kind of scream when they see the creature. Yeah, it's a Frankenstein doing uh, Frankenstein things. Nobody wants that. Yeah. But, but then Frederick kind of calms them down and is like, just, just, you know, hear me right. out. And, you know, he has the creature kind of do some basic movement, has him walk. And it's kind of like the toddler walk that we've seen the creature do before, you know, like he's just barely walking. Um, and then well, well, hold on. they just, I, uh, there is a great gag. It's very, it's blinking. You'll miss it. After the monster does all of the walking back and forth, he pops a treat into the monster's mouth. <laughs> like he's a dog. <laughs> yeah. But so then he's like escalating things to the next level of like what we can do. Mm-hmm. And they, the lights go dim for just a second. And then when they come back on, they're in, both, they're in tuxedos. Both, both of like them. Like full tuxes with tails, mm-hmm. uh, top hats, canes. And they break into on the putting Ritz. on the Ritz, which, which is probably one of, you know, another one of the most famous bits from this movie. That's so good. Yep. And, like, so, yeah, Frederick sings most of it, and, you know, the creature, like, in his... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, it, yeah, it's so good. And then they tap dance, and it's mm-hmm. it's fantastic. And, apparently, Mel Brooks was really, like, he thought this scene was too much. He didn't think it worked. <laughs> what? Um, Mel Brooks and, thought like, this didn't work? Yeah, yeah, apparently, Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks had, like, a... a argument like like shouting match about it and he was like i i just i think we got to pull it i don't think it works and gene kept defending it and then like mid just mid sentence like i, I saw like a little interview with yeah. gene wilder talking about it and he was like you know midway through mel bruce was just yeah. like okay it's in <laughs> right. it's fine yep. and he's like are you just backing down now like I, we were like in a heated fight about this and he was like i just wanted to see if you cared enough about it that you would fight for it and if you did, then I, I, you know, I guess it'll work. Uh, so he was, he was like, after that, you know, nothing was ever said again. It was, it was in, and that's the way it went. All right. Fair enough. And yeah, I, I like it, it. Probably is the most over the top scene in the but movie, it's but so like, I can't good. imagine it not being. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be in there. Yeah, but of course, <laughs> nothing can go quite right in in these movies. So uh, one of the lights actually pops and sets off a little bit of a fire. Which in turn sets off the monster. <laughs> of course, yeah. So he's he's scared, you know, screaming and kind of stumbling around. The crowd gets scared. They all Start run. stuff at him. Yeah, yeah. And so the, or yeah, they, they like kind of turn on him. The police show up. They capture him. And then we see him like chained up in jail. Poor monster. Uh, he's got this like kind of collar around his neck with like a bunch of chains. Right. Harkening back to like, was it Minnie or? Yeah, Minnie, the, the old lady in Bride of right. Frankenstein who like, yells at the creature through the window and stuff you got these like three villagers up in like the window holding onto the bars just like you know yelling at the creature and i found out so the main there's like three it's like one guy in the middle and then kind of like two behind him that guy in the middle is a british actor named clement von frankenstein (laughs) who is like a actual direct descendant of the frankenstein lot like the real frankenstein line not not the not the people that make the monsters just real historical people (laughs) Yeah, and they just got him in here just for this one little cameo, which is so good. I mean, the, the, like I said, little touches like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, poor, of course, the uh, Inga want, uh, wants to uh, help the doctor because now at this point he's very distraught. His monster is chained up. Who knows what the people of the village are going to do? So she wants to help him relieve his tension. Yeah, and she's like, if there was only some way I could help calm you. And she like, it ends with, if if there's only some way I could give you a little peace. <laughs> and it feels like that might of, be, you of know. something. Piece of something. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so then it immediately cuts to, like, he kind of, like, you know, kind of has a look, like, mm-hmm. Ooh, and it cuts to them being lowered down from the ceiling on the well, slab. Well, Lucas yelling for them. And they're like, oh, we're up here. We'll be down in a second. <laughs> and so, like, they're, like, post-coital yeah. under, like, a bed sheet Cigarettes smoking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. But it turns out that the reason that Frau Blucher is looking for them is that... Elizabeth's coming. Your, yeah. your fiance, Oops. the woman you're about to marry, is, is on her way here. Right Did you forget now? about her from like an hour ago in the movie? Right. 
And so she arrives and then like Frederick's very nervous Mm -hmm. and kind of like over the top nervous. Like Elizabeth has no reason to be suspicious and he like is acting super suspicious. suspicious. And of course, Um, (laughs) Igor, this is this gets a little skeevy, but Igor like hops in as they're calling each other darling and he starts calling her darling as well. And he's like, hey, you want to you want to shack up? And he's like, uh, then when uh, the doctor comes around, he's like, don't tell him. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Yeah, we won't talk about this. And the, the the best part of that whole bit is he like it, you know it's kind of like doing like the rah, rah, yeah. kind of like sexy thing and he like Elizabeth's wearing like a mink stole <laughs> with like the you know the mink head still on it and he like bites the mink and is like kind of like thrashing around like right. like a dog. She's freaking out. <laughs> and there's like little bits of fur in his mouth and so it's so good. <laughs> right. And of course you know Inga and Elizabeth meet and there's there's a little bit of tension but Inga's like you know I'm gonna play this off l- l- you know whatever. And, of course, yeah. Igor is like, hey, Doc, uh, let me help you with the bags. You take the blonde, I'll take the one in the turban. <laughs> because Elizabeth's wearing yeah. a turban. <laughs> you know? And, uh, of course, uh, uh, he's like, nah, 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 nah. We'll, we'll sort this out. It, yeah. You know. It's gonna... And so then we cut back to the creature in jail and the uh, the police are sort of like there's like a cop that's sort of tormenting him with fire. Mm-hmm. Just being a jerk, like for no reason. Well, you know what happens to jerks in these kind of movies? The yeah. monster chokes the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah, it's very satisfying. Wait, wait, this, is, this is the only kill of the movie. Well, yeah, I think go. so. All right. Couldn't. Yeah, I mean, other than like the hanged man oh, in the yeah, gallows, yeah, yeah. but the only like actual on-screen kill. Yeah, and it it's a you know it's well deserved. Yep, yeah, it's a well deserved brutal police officer who's being a jerk for no reason and gets what he deserves. So, yep. Gotta love yeah, I it. would say there's probably about three really horrific, horrific moments, and this would be one of them. Yeah. So he, you know, he manages to escape, and then we get, like, Inspector Kemp, and he's, like, talking to the mob. We've got all the pitchforks and torches, and he's like, now, a riot is a really extreme measure that we should go ahead and do right now. <laughs> it's time to riot. <laughs> I forget what he says, but basically... at. at Whatever it is, he says, the whole town once again does, what? <laughs> He's like, I just meant we got to go see the doctor. Yep. Yeah. So then we have Frederick is trying to get Elizabeth to sleep with him in the same right. bed. Because they're, you know, the creature is out, is on the loose. Like, you need to be safe. We need to stay together. And she's, she you know, really like doing the whole. Him. Yeah, she wants to wait till the wedding night. Yeah. And he is not like he, she keeps me like, but wouldn't it be so much better if we just, and he's just like, but. We no, no. Now. <laughs> be, now would be good also. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, she does end up sending him on, on his way. Too much to her uh, <laughs> her pain because as soon as he leaves, the monster shows up. Yep. He uh, he comes in through the window like we've seen in, I think, that in the, the first Universal movie. And, like, but he carries her out. And we kind of cut back and forth where we get, like, some stuff of the mob kind of searching. And then we are back to the creature and Elizabeth there in a cave yeah, but it's a very cozy cave with a lot of hay on the ground yeah yeah it's 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 a pleasant nice Would cave you say it's a love cave soon to be for sure yep uh yeah so well her her hair is already like has like white streaks in it similar to like the bride mm-hmm. but so then like the creature off camera like gets naked right. basically and she's like and w- <laughs> so she's a, she's and so it. Yeah, we confirmed uh, Inga's suspicion from earlier in the movie. So then, like, she's into it. The creature climbs on top of her, and she's kind of talking. Like, I don't know. I mean, that, that seemed kind of... I don't, I'm not sure if... And then, like, you know... Sweet mystery as of soon life, as, but last I found you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just, like, bursts into, like, operatic singing, like, right as things happen. So, like, clearly it's working out for her. Uh, and then we see uh, them, like, smoking, you know, in this, like, post-coil moment. Turns, uh, turns um, out seven times the charm, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. She wouldn't touch Frederick <laughs> once, but seven times. Yeah. Ah. And then we hear like violin music and the creature is again, just lured away by the music. And she's like, Oh, I see right. how you are. Just, you know, seven quickies. And then you're just out the door. <laughs> <laughs> right. <seven> um, <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, so the monster's entranced by the music. He goes and it turns out that, uh, the doctor and the whole trio are basically like doing a loudspeaker through a, a phonograph throughout the whole countryside of the doctor playing his violin. 
And so, like, the creature ends up, like, climbing up the side of the castle. They capture him again, and they start preparing for the transference. Right. We've got to give the monster some of the doctor's brain, which... Yeah, and this, to me, reminded me, like, of, of House of Dracula with, like, the blood transfusion right. thing. Except with just with brain, or... Yeah. Intelligence or brain uh, or whatever. So they, like, they get... You know, they've got Frederick and the creature on two slabs with, like you know, helmets that are all connected. And so the, the idea is that they're going to like transfer part of Frederick's intellect into the creature to like soothe his like wild and abnormal side. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's some, you know, hokey kind right, of brain yeah. science, but you know, we're used to that. And you know, it's, you gotta love yeah, it. We had the real science at the beginning and now we get the pseudo science <laughs> in the back end. It's fine. Yeah. But the villagers break through at the, Worst possible moment. Yeah, so it seems like, uh-oh, they're going to stop the process. But then the creature wakes up, and, like, he just starts talking. And he's like, I, I get it. I understand why you might be kind of frustrated, but I I'm a changed man. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. I, I, I <laughs> love the fact that, it, like, he is the most eloquent monster that we've heard. And he's like, oh, yeah. I, I felt like if I could not inspire love, I would cause fear. It's like, well said, <laughs> sir. Well said. <laughs> you know? But yeah, and the you know, as you never see, the angry mob is immediately just oh, okay, like, okay, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah. He's a rational man. All uh, right, let's go. And not only that, but they're like, we're we're sorry. Why don't we? Why don't we get you some cake? Right. <laughs> so, so the creature leaves with the mob to go have some cake. <laughs> And, you know, so Frederick hasn't woken up from this. So they all leave. And then we just kind of cut to some time has passed. Right. The doctor and Inga are getting married. Yeah. Yeah. So everything's kind of worked out for everybody in the what they actually wanted. So like Frederick and Elizabeth are not together. Right. Frederick and Inga are. But um, the monster <laughs> and Elizabeth are together. And she, she's she got him yeah. a nice little hamper that's just for his shirts and his duty underwear. <laughs> I, love, I love that. It's <laughs> And apparently, she, yeah, it's, she's getting ready to <laughs> to inspire some sexy scenes. The moment she's after, she's like, "Yeah, I got this hamper for your shirts and your duty underwear." Yeah, and so like they kind of have like a a very sitcom sort of mm -hmm. marriage. Like the the creature is like in bed wearing like little like half yeah. rim glasses. He's reading the paper, mm -hmm. and she's got like the she comes into you know into the room and she's got the bride hairstyle all mm -hmm. you know spiked up. And she like hisses at right. him like the bride does in the movie, and then she's kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, like that. That's their like love language is like <laughs> right. she's gonna get a little monstrous. Yeah. <laughs> so after that, I mean, so th there's a lingering question that gets raised at at the end. So it's the monster got some of the doctor's intelligence, but what did the doctor get from the monster? <laughs> And so, of uh, course, the movie has to. <laughs> Sweet uh, mystery yeah, he, of life at last I found. Yeah. So, you know, you know what he got. <laughs> I mean, he may not have gotten the Master Schwarzstucker, but he at least got the skills. Yeah. Or maybe he did. I don't know. Somehow the, the yeah. transference may have endowed him. <laughs> yeah. But either way, everybody's, ha you know, this is one of the very rare Frankenstein movies where like everybody lives happily ever Listen, after. I don't know if everyone lives happily ever after because I don't know about Igor and the Frau Luca. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Ha he's just gone after the, like, <laughs> but yeah, we, we just, we'll have to assume that he's happy. As maybe, well, maybe they but, got uh, together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be pretty damn funny. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's it everyone everyone ends up happy happily ever after yeah and you know again like this movie is just like it really is just everybody firing on all cylinders everyone. uh the writing the jokes it's just it's clearly a labor of love um yeah it's and like even you know we didn't really mention it much but like peter boyle is really, really good, good as a creature too um, he has a few bits where, like, I think it's when he hears music for the first time. He, like, kind of reaches up like he's trying to butterflies, catch butterflies. Yeah. And it, it feels kind of like when the creature sees light for the first time in, in, you know, the original movie. But, yeah, he has, like, a childlike innocence that really works. I think he's probably the closest to Karloff's portrayal of anything we've seen. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously, there's there's a lot, you know, it's played up for, for comedy in a lot of places, but... As far as just, like, the innocence and the childlike nature of the creature, yeah, I mean, he's right up there with Karloff. Yeah, 100%. Like, honestly, and unfortunately, most of these actors have already passed on, and it's very unfortunate. Yeah. But 
They were yeah, so Yeah, I mean, good. in the past couple years, we've lost several of yeah. them. Wilder and Boyle. I think we, we lost Khan quite quite a, a bit ago, unfortunately, but... Yeah, Khan and Feldman, I think, were, like, pretty young, like, yeah. you know, unexpected, like, young, and then, you know, yeah, Boyle and, and Wilder were both fairly recent. Right. So was Leachman. Uh, she died, she passed away last year, so... Yeah. But, you know, this, uh, yeah, this is definitely like a testament. Like you just, this whole group, you know, they all went on to do a lot of yes. other great stuff. But I feel like this really is like the best thing most of these people ever did. Just because it's like a more, you know, more than the sum of its parts kind of situation. Where, yeah, it's, I can't imagine anybody is listening to this who has seen not it, seen yeah. this. But if you have not seen Watch it, it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, let's put something. Like this one is essential. Let's put something at the beginning. That if for some reason you haven't seen it, stop, go see it, then come back because it is that important. Yeah, like I feel like some of these, and especially as as we kind of, I, I was just actually thinking about this as we've gotten through a lot of the classics, mm -hmm. we're gonna start getting into some weirder <laughs> stuff that people probably haven't seen or might have trouble finding. And in those cases, you know, I think I think the way we talk about these, as long as you're not like deathly afraid of any tiny spoiler i think you could probably still get a lot out of what we're doing mm -hmm. whether you've seen the movie or not but in this case i would yeah. highly highly recommend that you see it before the episode and if not definitely see it after like you can't spoil a movie no. like this you're gonna have a great time you know no matter what you know about it going absolutely in. i mean yeah you hearing us talk you know how much we love this movie <laughs> so yeah. i mean there's not much more we can say if you haven't seen it see it what are you doing what have you done with your life? <laughs> All yeah. right. And like, you know, if you haven't seen it, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for yeah. you because like, I wish I could see this movie again for the oh, first time. So do I every bit of it. You know what? If you're watching it for the first, first time, I want you to take a video of yourself watching it for the first time, cut it up, do whatever you got to do with it, but send it to us so we can watch you watch it for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, anybody who is seeing this for the first time, I definitely want to hear from you. You know, we keep we you know we do all the 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 social kind of recommendation at the end, and like if you yeah if you're seeing this for the first time, please 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 hit us up. Yep. You know, at the Frankencast on Twitter or Instagram or you know the Frankencast at gmail dot com. Like we would love to hear what you think of this movie. Indeed, yeah, and like you know, post yourself on YouTube if you have to. Send us the link. Whatever <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep yeah all right so speaking um, of the socials uh we've just named them off we got the twitter we got the instagram we got the youtube uh yeah so we're a gmail send us something what's happening next week anthony yeah. i think i think uh we need a little bit more reanimation in our life <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you, you kind of tease a little bit last week yes we're we're gonna do reanimator next oh, week. love it uh Yes. Uh, so it's another one we've, we've uh, kind of referred to a few times in the past. So we're kind of trying to get some of those that we keep talking about and like actually go ahead and talk about them like for real. Right. Uh, so we're actually going to do the whole trilogy and then maybe some stuff mm. after that, some surprises. Uh, but yes. So, so next week it'll be, you know, the original reanimator, Jeffrey Combs, yeah. Barbara Crampton. It's yep. Yeah, it's going to be all their, in all their young glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, so much cheese. So good. By the way, if you if you don't know like the story behind it, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. We'll talk about that next week. Just know that it is tangentially related to Frankenstein. We wouldn't just be doing it for no reason. There's a lot of Frankenstein in this. So oh, for sure. Well, if we got do we got anything else to say? I think that covers All it. All right, then in that case, to be continued. Uh... Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>